Well, hello again, do-it-yourselfers. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. Welcome to another one of my video shorts on current topics at electrical-online.com and of course right here on YouTube. So in this project, I'm going to install another ceiling fan with a remote control. Now, it's a good fit for this location application here because I only have two wires, a hot and a neutral coming to this operated by a control switch. So a remote is good if you want to have a light and a fan operation and it's right in front of the fireplace here in the living room so a fan was essential and you might as well have a light kit with it as well as long as we got a, a nice low profile one like I picked for this project because the ceilings are only eight feet high in here. Now I've done a couple ceiling fan videos before in fact uh, one of my installing a ceiling fan with a remote is one of my most viewed videos on YouTube. However, back then it was in a lower quality standard definition camera and the sound quality wasn't, wasn't quite as good as it should be as well. So this one is going to be much more detailed. It's going to be high definition and it will hopefully give you a better picture of how to do this. And it's a more modern ceiling fan from Hunter called the Apex 2. So let's get started with this and we'll go step by step and try to show you exactly every step of the way where everything goes how you mount it, starting with the mounting. I'm going to talk about that for a minute here. This is just a pan box, a pancake box they call them, metal one. But I checked when I was up in the attic doing uh, numerous projects with this renovation. Check the mounting of this and it's solid. So we've got our, our roof trusses running this direction and then we've got blocking across between two 24 inch center roof trusses here. We've got a two by four across there that this pan box is screwed firmly too. So we can probably trust the mounting holes for the pan box itself to support this fan, but I'm going to do my best to get another wood screw right up through that 2x4 just to make sure it's firm and solid. And the instructions say you either have to mount these to a ceiling box approved fan, or sorry, a box approved for a ceiling fan mount, or then you have to get some wood screws into the structure itself to support it properly. So we're going to do our best to get that done solid and always the test to make sure your ceiling fan is good is after you've got the bracket mounted, give it a good tug on it. You can, if you can hang from it, your ceiling fan is going to be all right. So let's get started by putting the bracket up there and see what we can do to get some extra support into the building structure. So this is the fan we'll be using for this install. It's a Hunter Apex 2 ceiling fan for a large room. 132 centimeter or 52 inch diameter. We'll be using the standard mount on a short down rod for this living room with a, only an eight foot ceiling here. So let's uh, open up the box and set our parts all aside and see what we got. All right, so here's all the components of this fan laid out for you. Here's all the blades, of course, reversible blades with the quick, quick mount feature that I'll show you later. Here's the light kit, which includes the fan control capacitors inside here as well. So you bring your wires in through that light kit and plug in and that makes everything work. Ballast cover for that or component cover. Your reversing switch is inside the, the uh, diffuser lens for the light. Here's your diffuser lens and your two LED lamps that they include with it. Your remote control unit and a little quick guide here to uh, help you understand the functions of the remote. This is your main mounting bracket. This is the canopy that covers it. Here's your short down rod mounting ball, hanging ball. All the hardware components are here. Marettes, batteries, and a nice little handy warning telling you not to eat the batteries. It's always useful, including some other useful warnings on the plastic bags not to put them over your head because you can't breathe then. And here's a balance kit. Hopefully you don't need that. I always uh, keep them, put them aside in a drawer though, because if your fan isn't balanced after you mount it, you'll need that. Instruction manual, all the blade brackets. And here is the receiving unit for the remote. So some units you have to make sure that you set your dip switches inside the remote and the receiving unit to match this one they're paired from the factory there is a procedure to pair it in the instruction manual should it not be paired but that should be all done for you so 
even two spare screws, one of each kind, just to, if you drop one and can't find it because it bounced under the sofa, they thought of sending you two spare screws. So let's get started with this. We'll show you step-by-step -step how to install it. All right, so I've got a plan together for the mounting bracket. I was able to, first off, I'll show you this big lag bolt is going right up through a hole in the box and through a two by four, the two by four that supports it. That's the lag bolt that's gonna support the safety cable that holds the whole fan assembly should something ever shake apart, it'll keep it from falling to the ground. Now, for the, as for the mounting bracket itself, I've got the box screw on this side, 832 standard outlet box mounting screw. So that's going to fit in nicely there. I removed one of the mounting screws. That was just a, a number eight Robertson screw going right up into the two by four. It lined up right above where I can slip two, two screws into, into the other side of this mounting bracket and the oblong elongated slots here that they give you to mount the bracket. I'm able to get the regular box screw in and with a nice two and a half inch wood screw right beside the regular mounting machine screw, I'm able to get this screw right up through the structure as well. And just snug everything up evenly. There's rubber grommets here on this bracket to keep you from getting vibration through the ceiling structure. So what I've basically got is the two standard mounting machine screws holding this bracket up and that large two and a half inch wood screw. So I can hang from this bracket. That's putting all my weight and nothing moves. So we know I've got a good solid mounting bracket to support this ceiling fan. So there we are in the instructions, just basically describing what I did. The um, machine screws is option one, and the second option is having some wood screws. They supply wood screws. First thing I usually do is throw them in the garbage because they're Phillips, and I, me and Phillips screw heads don't get along very well. I like Robertson or Torx are good, but Phillips, we call those knuckle busters. Anyhow, so I got a different screw up there, but as you've seen, I've mounted the bracket very securely. Next step, moving on, is to mount the factory supplied down rod and the mounting ball. And we gotta mount that into here. Now there's a set screw here that they give you a warning, do not throw away because you just wanna back that out out of the threads. And we're going to be using that in a minute. Send you plenty of cable here just in case you need to mount this on an angle or you want a long down rod or on a sloped ceiling, vaulted ceiling. You need the down rods to clear, get your blades to clear the ceiling structure. So we'll be cutting off a bunch of this wire, but we'll do that after we get it up in place so we don't ever leave ourselves short. So you want to thread these up through. Always want to make sure your canopy is going to slide over top of that mounting ball. Otherwise you want to make sure that you put that on first. That's from experience. Otherwise you got to take this apart again and put on that canopy. But again, the instructions lay that out that it will fit afterwards. Slide over top. So here's your safety cable. Gonna slide that in through the down rod as well. That's just a three-quarter inch rigid 
pipe, pipe thread, national pipe thread. This ground rod keeps, or ground wire keeps getting in the way. All right, so hand tight is good for that because you're gonna make sure it's secured with by tightening that set screw that you see right here. Tighten that into the threads so there's no way they can back out. Okay. That's done. Now slide our canopy over top. And just let that sit. Now we can go up there, hang our safety cable. And I actually like to, before I put it onto that lag bolt, I like to hook it up again Put it on the, around the lag bolt first, but then pull it up even higher and hook it on something we'll show you up there that can get you to the right level so it can hang there while you do your wiring connections. If you let it go all the way to the end of the cable, then you're going to be too, you're going to have a whole lot of wire to try and get rid of if you want to do your wiring connections while the motor assembly is hanging from the cable here. So let's go up and do step two, three, four, and maybe even five. Okay, so I've got my whole motor assembly up here. I'm going to put this cable, safety cable, around the lag bolt and tighten up the noose. Pull it tight. And then finish turning in that lag bolt. There, now the cable is supporting the weight of everything. And as I mentioned, I'm just gonna pull this up through the bracket for now. And hook it around the mounting bracket itself just to shorten this cable up a little bit. Even a little more. Okay. Now I'll see this way I can cut my wires to the right length and not worry about supporting the weight of that motor. So this should be plenty of cable. Cut those off. Now this just takes some planning because I'm going to move in for a closer shot while we do the wiring of the remote and show you where it goes. Because it's got to slip up into here without catching any wires or cables. And uh, that's where it hides inside the canopy there. So I'm going to zoom in for a closer shot. All right, so we're ready to start making our connections. Now, ground wires, earthing wires, we've got one here that is screwed right into the down rod, one that goes right down to the light kit assembly, one from the box that goes around the box screw, that's right here, and we have one on the mounting bracket itself. So we've got four ground wires to go together in a, in a splice here. Strip them all. Scrape the paint off of this one. It's all painted from ceiling paint. Get some bare copper there. Exposed. So one, two, three, and the fourth one is a supply cable ground. Twist these together. Now 
Make sure your wires are going up through the mounting bracket in the proper spot. Okay, so lining up those ground wire ends again. And try to get your chubby little fingers into a small space, working with a short ground wire. Make sure you got a firm bite on all the conductors. You'll know because if it doesn't firm up as you're spinning that nut tight, you'll know that it's pushed one of the conductors out of the, one or more of the conductors out of the splice. But used up just about all the tail they left me on that ground wire. Another lesson, always leave plenty of wire. You can always cut it off but hard to add to it so better to be looking at it than looking for it is my motto okay I can pull on all four of those ground wires and they're all inside that moret and tight so we can poke that ground splice up out of the way we shouldn't have to deal with it anymore now I can lower this suspension cable again a little bit and start working on the other splices. So if you look at the instructions, it's fairly straightforward on the remote. You have your supply, black and white, on this side, and they say tie that into your source neutral, as well as the neutral from the fan and light. So you can have three wires in that, this neutral for the load, or the line side of the remote, from the supply, the line neutral, and this wire from the fan and light are all going to go together. Okay. Neutrals. Spin that wire nut on. Okay, so your neutral is connected. Now we've got to take the line side of the receiver, the power in, and hook it to the black supply wire. Of course the breaker is off. I know that'll come up in the comments. <laughs> and the switch is off, so I've got double protection. Okay, so there, black supply power to the line input of the receiver, the neutral and the neutral to the fan, all to the neutral incoming wire. Now going to the receiver output side, we got the blue wire for the light kit goes to the blue wire of the fan itself. And then here begs the question why they didn't keep the wire colors consistent. Now it's the yellow out of the receiver goes to the black from the fan. And I guess that would be just to avoid confusion with the line side connection black wire so they change colors here. Make that a yellow, yellow to black. So basically your receiver just receives power from the wall switch. And when it's on, then it's able to receive a command from the remote. So once you've got power here, then it knows from commands from the remote, whether to turn the light on, dim it, whatever, or turn the fan, change speeds. It all happens electronically in this little magic box. So now we poke these wires up and out of the way so they won't be pinched on anything. While we got the room without the remote installed, we're going to hook the mounting ball up into the bracket. And you turn it, see it's raised up, falls into place, can swivel. Now you know you're in the right spot. Now we want to take this receiver and carefully poke it into the bracket here. Pull the antenna in first. It's on the other side of it. And that's just going to be coiled up inside the canopy. And then I can see I'm right up here so I can see that I'm not pinching any wires. This is where you got to fumble around a little bit to get things right.
Receiver's in place, pretty much. Now I just gotta poke any excess cable up into the outlet box. Find a spot for that blue wire. Find a spot for the yellow and black splice. Okay, everything's in. Antenna's in. Now I gotta get the two mounting screws for the canopy. And you'll find that there's a right and a wrong way to put this canopy on. One way, it goes right up solid against the ceiling. If you try it at the wrong end, it doesn't fit. So again, it's gotta be the right orientation. Put those two screws in next. I've seen a blue wire poking out a little bit, so we'll make sure he's out of the way. Inside this canopy housing, the wires are fine. What you don't wanna have is make sure that when you hang that ball into the, into the socket, into the bracket, that you don't have any wires pinching in there. Because that will cause some damage. Okay, so carrying on with the canopy screws, the canopy lined up. Put the first one in loosely at first. Second one on the back side. And you can tighten that one up. And then go back and finish with this one. All right. And again, make sure that everything moves freely. Now we can go ahead and put on our blade brackets. And you could do that on the ground as well, but we'll put them on now while it's in place. All these blade brackets now go on. Probably would be much easier to do this sitting on the floor, but I'll just show you a couple of them and then you just repeat the procedure for all five. Put in one screw at a time, just because they kind of have to overlap each other. That one slips in behind that one. And then put your other two in and repeat for all five brackets. Okay, as you can see, all five blade brackets are on, checked and double checked. All the screws, the, the blade mount screws, just to make sure they're tight, much like you would the lug nuts on your wheel. Now you see there's three screws that hold the light kit on. Two of them have keyhole slots, as you can see here. So all you have to do is remove one of those screws, back out the other two, just to make sure they're gonna accept the keyhole slot. And you gotta feed the wire cable connector, multi-pin connector up through the light kit. And line up those two keyholes. And then install that third screw. Okay, and then get that third screw in and through the magic of video, this appears to be really easy. But you're trying to get a screw up through a ballast compartment full of wires and capacitors and tighten one screw. So my question to Hunter, if anybody's watching, why wouldn't you make all three of those keyhole slots? Wouldn't have made this a lot easier, but we got it. Okay, so I've got all three of those tightened now. And I'm gonna pull out the plug. All right, so we've pulled that connector pin, multi-pin plug out. Make sure you orient it the right way. They've got letters on them to make sure you're plugging it in the right way, but I'm sure there's only one way it'll allow you to plug it in. I'll try to poke everything back up into there so we can put our cover on. All right, put on the cover. Put 
threw in our light bulbs, the light bulbs which they supplied, which is always nice because how many times have you taken a fixture home? Maybe you haven't, but I have. Hung it all up, go to test it, and no bulbs included or lamps included. So then you gotta run down to the hardware store and pick up some. But they included these. Thank you, Hunter. All right, we'll put on the diffuser lens. And you'll see there's notches here that you have to line up, three notches. Turn it till you feel it snap into place. Again, make sure everything's moving freely. Put on our blades. All right, so the blades, unpackage them. They come with two shades, one a little darker, one a little lighter. So we're going with the light side down. Now, if you can see, these are just quick mount blade mounts that you just push on through rubber grommets. An excellent innovation in fan design. Remember always having to uh, balance them on my head like this and put in those blade mount screws. So now you just line it up all three holes evenly, snap it down, check to see that your grommets have come all the way through on the other side and you're done. Repeat this for five blades. Not a whole lot of difference between the shades of these colors here. So double check, make sure you're matching them all up. It's two. Three. Quattro, four, and the fifth one. Again, double check to make sure they've all slipped through the grommets properly. Give it a spin, make sure it Spins nice and freely and let's turn on the power and test. So I removed the battery compartment put in again. Nice of them to supply two AAA batteries for the remote. And as per instruction, let's see if you can read that. I didn't eat them. It says do not ingest the battery. So I didn't do that. Put them in the remote instead. Let's go turn on the power. All right, with the power on, read the instructions briefly here. One touch on the fan switch to turn it on. There it goes. And then to speed it up, just repeated punches on the up arrow. And I think we've hit high speed. Again, hit the fan button to shut it off, and let's try the light. On for the light. Short press, it said, for... Oh, that was a fan. Short press for off for the light. And then to get it into dimming mode, you have to push both these buttons together. And then it says a long press on the light bulb, and you're into dimming mode, so you can dim and brighten that lamp. So there you have it, the installation of the Hunter Apex 2 ceiling fan with remote. Thanks for watching. I hope I gave you enough close-up detail that you can see exactly how things went together in high definition this time. This will be in the playlist with my other ceiling fan videos, but I encourage you to watch them all. But this one I think gives you a much more detail and a much better picture with sound quality. So. Thanks again for watching, Terry Peterman, the internet electrician, and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, like this video, give it a thumbs up, and click on that notification bell so that way you'll know when I release a new video. Thanks again, till next time.